Quintus Cephas. Um, we saw him in uh, not very much special teams work last year. You have him, uh, the right terms, up back on the, the kickoff return. No kickoff returns to speak of, but what gives you the confidence there in, <coughs> with him in that role? Yeah, uh, I think he had one punt. He was a gunner on that last punt, and he uh, helped force a fair catch down there at the end. Then he had those seven kickoff reps or return reps. Um, he's done nice. He's done a good job for us. Um, I would say he's improved from a year ago. Um, we're actually looking to try to play him a little bit more in this next game. Hopefully we get him in a few different roles this week. Um, but, you know, he was playing what we call a wing for us on kickoff return, and obviously there was no return, so we'll see. But. On the, uh, the onside, did you look back at it? Was that, did you guys telegraph that in any way? Did they just play it well? How do you sort of uh, play um, play? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, somebody had said to me, I, I don't read a whole lot, but this time of year for sure. Uh, <laughs> somebody had said to me that somebody tweeted something out or something before the kick, which I'm not really sure what that was or or how they would have known that. And I mean, maybe there was something. I really don't know. I, I would just say I don't think uh, I don't think the Eagles knew that. They read their Twitter and yelled across the field and told the guy it's coming. Um, so it doesn't really concern me a whole lot. Uh, if you ask me, were they probably you know thinking that we could do anything against them? I know if I were playing us, I would be obviously highly cautious, uh, and I would expect the unexpected um, for sure. So. I don't, you know, I don't think they had an idea that we we're going to kick that kick like that, and necessarily in that situation. Now, in that time in the game, it was a couple possession game. Uh, you know, the game's getting into a later part of the game. I would say, you know, I, maybe you could think that that would be a time where you might want to call it or something like that if somebody said that. But at the end of the day, it comes down to execution. Um, I could have coached the play better for sure. Um, and then, you know, we could execute a little bit better. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that the head coach has got the confident, confidence in us to do those things and execute them. It's our job to get it done, and we didn't do a good enough job of that. And I, I would definitely take a lot of responsibility for that. Um, the sideline. Yeah, I think on really on all the onside kicks, whether they're obvious or surprise, um, I, I would say in general, for the most part, the, one of the biggest challenges you have is you got a group of guys on kick cover who are stationary when the ball's kicked and they're trying to accelerate to full speed and the ball's got to go at least 10. Um, and like on that play, those guys were sitting with their back foot on 15. So they were a little bit in front of 15 yards away from the ball when it's being kicked. Just in general, whether it's a surprise or obvious onside kick, I would say the closer the ball is to 10, the better off your odds of recovering it. The further down the field, the further away from the kick cover group and our 10 guys who are trying to get it. So probably advantage to them. So I would say in general terms, that's probably the easiest way I could describe it. Um, but yeah, and now that's not to say that there's not a way to push the ball further down the field and get it in a hole or something like that, where maybe you could exploit that. But I would say on a kick like that, most of these obvious onside kicks at the end of the game, I would say it that way. Sure, uh, onside kicks were successful 18% of the time. I imagine that goes up when they're not expected, right? And they're more of a surprise. I'm just kind of curious if you have any kind of read on Outside of the obvious yeah, I would say it goes up significantly in a surprise situation than an obvious. Um, but I, d I don't have the exact numbers for you and over what time period and all that. But I I've heard some before. It's definitely different. Um, uh, and it's at a much higher rate. But yeah. You mentioned how uh, there, there weren't any kick returns to, to speak of. And um, of course, it's probably give and take. I mean, it's, it's risk reward if you are going to return it when it's deep in the end zone. But how much of an emphasis is there? I think the offense only started on the plus side of the 31 time in the game, just working on field position. So the offense, all, all five of their touchdown drives, I think, were 70 plus yards. So just trying Our to offense? Shorten. Yes, yes. Just the emphasis on trying to shorten the field for them as special teams always flipping field position. Yeah. Um, so, like, I mean, it, I, I would say this. A lot of people relate field position to special teams, and I would say field position is all three phases. Now, on a kickoff or a kickoff return, obviously the ball starts at 35 most of the time, sometimes after a penalty or safety, the 20, right, and they're kicking off. But most of the time it's from the 35. And 
So the starting field position after a kickoff or a kickoff return, yeah, is somewhere around the 25-yard line, whether it's a touchback or a return, right? Um, but I would say, so there's not a huge fluctuation of starting field position on a kickoff, kickoff return. You're going to roughly start around the 25. Um, I would say a punt, a punt return, totally different. And so if you're talking about starting field position, trying to start on the other side of the 50, now you're incorporating offense and defensive football. Um, if they punt from the five, their own five, we got a better chance to start in the drive inside the 50. If they're punting on their own 45, uh, it's harder for us to start across the 50. You know what I'm saying? So I would say a lot of a lot of that field position is also the offense and defense. Um, and sometimes I think people just in generalizing say that special teams is field position. Um, and I don't agree with that at all. All three phases contribute. It makes a difference if the team's punting on fourth and one or they're punting on fourth and 15. Um, because of what you're able to do and set up and not have to worry about taking away, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of things out there that that influence the result or the outcome of a lot of these plays, whether they're special teams or offense and defense. But um, so I would say that in general to field position. I don't know. Does that help? Yesterday, and Aaron said, "I mean, it's all it's all three components." I yeah. just wondered how. Yeah, I, I would say this. I mean, like you can look at the chart, um, and everyone says turnovers are the the number one statistic in winning and losing. And I would say they're a huge part of it, but really, like if you just look at a field chart and you look at drive start, the further back you start, the less chance you have to score. Period, and it just goes up, and it's really fairly linear um, the way it goes up. So the closer you get, every yard counts. The closer you get, the better your odds of scoring, um, both touchdowns and field goals, ultimately points. Um, but uh, when you turn the ball over, you also take the punt out of the play. So you don't have the 40-yard flip. So not only do you lose the possession, you give the possession to the opponent, but you also don't have the net of 40 yards. You know what I'm saying? So now it's a short field. You start with the ball in really good field position. Um, really, field position dictates points. In that regard, are you happy with, with uh, Jack in the, uh, um, the, the punting operation? I think he had an average of 46.3 and net of 43. I mean, you got to be pretty happy about that, right? Yeah, I was really happy with how he punted. Um, I thought he did a great job in the game. And it's not just the statistics that you see, but uh, his operation was really good. He was operating on a fast rhythm, which uh, is important. Um, I thought the protection did a good job. I thought the coverage could have helped him out a little bit more than we did. We kind of had a missed tackle or two uh, on the first return in the game. Um, so there's areas for us to improve there for sure. And then uh, I thought his direction, his hang time was really good. Um, gave, you know, Mike Hughes made a great play as that left gunner cut through there, I think, on our second punt. And uh, on that one there, he made a great play, but Fox is a huge part of that, hanging the ball up and having that much hang time, giving him a chance to get down there and make that. Um, but yeah, I, was, I would say overall with Fox, I was really pleased with him. What he accomplished in his first go around? Yeah, I would say obviously we had a penalty um, on the punt return, so I'm sure you're alluding to that to some degree. Um, you know, penalties are really costly in the return game. Um, I would just say it like that. And our guys have heard me say that a million times, but penalties kill you in the return game on special teams. Probably the same would be said for offense or defense. But, you know, it was a holding penalty for 10 yards, but we also negated an 11 yard return. So at the end of the day, we really sacrificed 21 yards of field position. Um, with one penalty there, so it's obviously um, disappointing um, with that. But, uh, you know, overall, I thought for Kirby, he got in there, he played hard, and he knew what he was supposed to do. Um, I think just like all these young players, when they go out there, they're going to have some ups and downs. And ultimately, really, the goal for us is just to continue to find ways to improve and get them better better throughout the course of the year. And hopefully by the end of the season, he's playing really good football for us. You mentioned the returns that so the average field position is always kind of around that 25-yard line, but it seems like you guys kind of had an inherent strategy in week one to kick it short and, and trust your kick coverage. And if I'm not mistaken, it worked every time you had them stop before the 25. So what went into that strategy? And I guess do you have confidence going forward that maybe the strategy isn't just to boot it through the end zone? Yeah, I think. I mean, I think like over the 
we really employed that to a large degree last year. <clears throat> and then I think what happened, like, during the offseason, whatever, people forward me these articles that say, you know, that's the right thing to do. You know, they always say it after the fact, right? <laughs> While you're doing it. It's like the analytics guys, they say, you know, we should have kicked the field goal here. And then next year they say, well, that changed. That was last year. <laughs> it's like, well, when we were making that decision, we were using – what was the information? Bad info? Um, but it was exactly right at the time they told it to us. So, uh, But, yeah, it's just funny how all that stuff works. But I would say we did that a lot last year. We kicked it up. We made them return it. Um, we'll probably do a lot of that this year. Uh, one thing that's great, you know, for me, coaching special teams here as a head coach, I mean, he, he loves playing every single one of these plays, and he likes putting the pressure on the opponent. Um, no matter what phase it is. And uh, so our guys love covering. It keeps our guys excited about the play. Um, they love covering the field. They take a lot of pride in it. Um, and so it's great. Uh, I thought those guys did a great job in coverage. Obviously, one of the looks was against kind of a hands look at the end of the game. So it kind of tilted the thing in our favor. But. Uh, We'll see. We'll play it week to week. Some of it's who we are. Some of it's who they are. Some of it's you know situation in the game, whether it be time and score or just just time or just score. But yeah.